Well, hello. Happy Thanksgiving. We have a new episode of Church School for you today. But Father Larry doesn't seem to be around. I'll be there in a second. I wonder what he's doing. Hmm. Oh, I think he's coming. Hi, sorry. I just wanted to get my Thanksgiving shirt. Your Thanksgiving shirt? Wrong shirt. Yeah. You have to wait for this for at least till the end of Advent for uh, to wear that. At least that long. <laughs> I know what would be more like it. These little guys. Remember these from when we were tiny little kids? Yes, I do remember. So it wasn't Thanksgiving around my house and probably not yours either until the until mom broke out the pilgrim candles. Yes, my mother took them out of the china closet where she kept it the rest of the oh, year. year long. <laughs> yes. Well, we'll put them down for now. Over here on Plymouth Rock. So, Thanksgiving. It is. And you know, Thanksgiving isn't really about what you eat at all. No. Thanksgiving is about giving thanks. Yep. My dad's favorite holiday because it wasn't so encumbered. You could actually just focus on family and being and being together. And for us as a parish family, giving thanks for each other and all that we all that we do together. So what's up for this episode? Well, I understand that you have a book of poems to read to I us. I do. I'm looking forward to it. And something like, thanks two times? Thanks two times. Thanks six times? Okay. Beats me. Thanks a hundred times? Oh, thanks a million. The name of the book. Is thanks a million. <laughs> So, I hope you'll read it for us right now. <laughs> okay, I will. Hi, and welcome to Storytime. I don't often get to read these books, but I'm really happy to be with you today. We're going to be sharing a book called Thanks a Million. It's a book of poems by Nikki Grimes with pictures by Cosby A. Cabrera. Now, poems are almost word paintings. They sometimes tell a story. They sometimes rhyme. But they almost always make us feel something. So, this wonderful book called Thanks a Million has several short poems. Let's get started. Number one, reward. Thank you is a seed I plant in the garden of your heart. Your smile is the flower, a slow and sweet surprise, a bloom before my eyes. Dear teacher, dear teacher, if you tutor someone twice a week for three months, when two months have five weeks and one month has four, what do you get? Sparkling blackboards, nine Mondays in a row, a straightened desk, no less than 16 times, two kisses, one per cheek, and a big fat thanks, signed David, who only hates math one half as much as he used to. The third one is called the lunchroom. My lunch trays like a boulder. I've lugged around for miles, past strangers left and right, whose unfamiliar smiles are meant for someone else, because I'm the new kid here. You'll do fine, Mom said earlier. Of that, I have no fear. At least I have a pie that I don't have to share. If no one will sit next to me, why should I even care? Oh, wait, here comes a boy. I'm Max, he says. Who are you? I smile and introduce myself, then break my pie in two. Here's a short poem. 
mystery. Rich or poor, we all own two tiny treasures. Worthless if saved, they're priceless when spent. What are they? Thank you. Oh, here's a poem about weekends. God invented weekends, and I'm thankful for that. My weekends mean less homework. Get out the ball and bat. Just think, fun is official. At least two days a week. So skateboard or play video games, go swim or scale a peak. A peak is a mountain. I might go to a movie or choose to sleep all day. Whatever I decide to do, there's no work either way. Weekends are worth having, but I have one request. Could you please lengthen them a bit? I need six days of rest. The Good Neighbor. At dinner time, if mom is late, Miss Lee feeds me. Her cooking's great. I worry that my whispered thanks sound hollow as ball. One day last fall, to even the score, I left a Snickers by her front door, then rang the bell and ran before she came. I know she loved her dark surprise. I catch the sparkle in her eyes when she tells me about her sweetest secret. Here's a short poem called Even the Trees. Trees, arms raised in praise, demonstrate the attitude of gratitude. Always. Here's one about a child in a shelter. I wish these walls were ours. I wish this bed were mine. The dinner time meant just us three, my brother, mom, and me. I wish I had a room that I was forced to clean. I gripe to my best friend and say, come to my house and play. Things could be worse, I know. At least I'm not alone. My mom and brother hold me tight when I cry late at night. Here's one called A Lesson from the Death. First, sweep one hand up to your mouth and blow a kiss, like this. Second, drop that hand into the other, crisscross, opening, open palms staring in the sky. Do you see how your clever hands create a butterfly? Think of shadows that you shape on a wall at night, but this is more than play. Stand before someone who has been kind to you. Follow steps one and two, and without breathing a word, your thank you will be heard. This is our last poem, and it's a nice one for Thanksgiving. A round of thanks. The turkey lies waiting while we bow for grace to offer up thanks for this time and place, for a spot on the swim team, for a chance to run track, for Graham who lived far away and has finally moved back, for this creaky old house with the patched up roof for my sister, the pest, for my brother, the goof, for this table of tongue-teasing treasures heaped high, for stuffing, roast turkey, and hot apple pie. We give thanks, Lord. We give thanks. And that was a million thanks from Thanks a Million. Thank you 
Father Larry for sharing those poems with us. I don't think we've read poems together in Sunday school before. No, I don't think so. But you know, we use poems in church a lot. We have the Psalms and of course we have the hymns, which are really mostly poems that are set to music. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. I bet that some people are wondering where we are today. Could be. Well, it's Thanksgiving, and so we thought it would be nice to have church school here at home. So from our home to your home, happy Thanksgiving. It's nice and warm here in the rectory. Yes, it is. Well, I hear that our friend Major Tom has a song for us today. He does, and it's a, it's a hymn. It's a poem set to music, and it begins, Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Wait a minute. Mount? Fount? What's a fount? <laughs> well, a fount is nothing more than a fountain. It's just, I remember, it's poetry, so it got shortened. Come thou fountain of every blessing. Imagine a fountain of blessings just coming up and blowing blessings all over, splashing down on us. That's what this song's about. Oh, now so I understand. So maybe the kids can listen for the word fount. Uh, Mount rhymes with fount, and they can listen for the word grace. But there was something else in there. I think it said we should sing in tune with God. Tune our hearts with God. Yes, that means to walk together with God. Oh, so when we do the Christmas pageant, we're going to try to sing in tune with God then. In more ways than one. Okay, okay. Well, let's go to Major Tom and hear the song. Well, folks, uh, welcome to another edition of Major Tom's Clubhouse. And, uh, well, you know, Thanksgiving is coming, and and Thanksgiving we always think about the things that we're we're thankful and grateful for, and a couple of things. One thing I'm I'm really grateful for is all the all the great friends I have here at at All, at all Saints, and I'm I'm thankful that my good friend Teddy here has come from behind the camera, and he's going to be in front of the camera today. He's going to help me out with this song that we're going to play. Uh, so I'm also thankful for all the wonderful hymns that are in the hymnal that are such a part of our lives. And uh, the hymns are ours through our whole life, from the time we're little to to the time, you know, all through the years. And uh, one of those, those special hymns uh, that we're going to play today, which is appropriate for Thanksgiving, is Come Thou Font of Every Blessing. So you've heard it in church, but don't know if you've heard it quite like this before. Are you ready, Teddy? I'm ready. Let's All right. play. Okay. Come thou font of every blessing To my heart to sing thy grace Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious song, not some by flaming tons above. Praise the mount, oh, fix me on it, mount of God's unchanging love. Here I find my greatest treasure, hither by thy help I've come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger and to pose his precious blood. Thank you. 
grace, how great a debtor, deadly I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a feather, by my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Well, we're back. Thank you, Major Tom. Thank you, Phantom Saxophonist. And we are getting ready for Arts and Crafts with Mrs. Byrne. Well, Mrs. Byrne, what are we making today? We're making pie. Not again. Wow. I'm not going to get another pie in the no, face. No, 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 no. No oh, throwing good. pies today. Good. We're making pie. That's a nice change. I hope it's pumpkin. No, it's not pumpkin pie. Apple? Not apple pie. Your famous blueberry pie? Not today. I give up. We're making thankfulness pie. Okay. Well, you'll have to come to the arts and crafts workshop to see how we do it. I'll be watching. I'm usually thankful for pie. Hey, welcome back to Arts and Crafts with Mrs. Byrne. Today, we're in my home art studio, but it looks a lot like my church art studio. And we are going to make pie. Now, some of the adults out there might be wondering if we're going to make humble pie but we're not making humble pie. We're making thankful pie. And this is what we need to do it. We need a plain white paper plate. We need scissors, something that's safe for you to use. We need this funny thing, which is called a paper fastener. It has a circle on one side, it's pointy on the other side, and it bends. And I'll show you what we're going to use it for in a few minutes. We need brown crayons, and it could even be a piece of a brown crayon. That might come in handy. And we need a black marker. And then very important, we need to print out the PDF that's on the website for this session. When you print it out, I used orange paper. If you don't have that, you can just use an orange crayon or whatever color you want to, to make it the color pie you want. I'm making pumpkin pie, so I wanted mine to be orange. Okay then, we're ready. The first thing we need to do is make the pie crust. That's always what you do first with the pie. But this is gonna be pretty easy. We're going to take the brown crayon and I'm gonna move this out of our way. I'm going to just color the outside circle, but I really wanna make it very nice and brown. So I have to press pretty hard and there I go. And the little bumps on the plate are like where you would crimp the pie dough if you were really making pie from scratch. If you want to use the piece of crayon, that's pretty easy too. You can just rub it. But you really want to make sure that you make this whole circle around the outside of the plate nice and brown. So it looks like your pumpkin baked. Nobody wants to eat a pie crust that hasn't been baked long enough. That doesn't look pretty and it doesn't taste good. So, so you're gonna go all the way around your plate like this. 
but I have one that I already did for you earlier. And here it is. It goes all the way around. But now I have to put the orange pie filling in my plate. So when you get your printout, you'll see the circle and we need to cut that circle out. I did this ahead of time, but I still have one more job. There's a sort of triangular slice of pie and I wanna cut that part out. So I'm just gonna cut on the line. Sli one slice and here's another. So I cut a whole piece of pie out. Okay. So it looks like this. And then I'm going to attach this pie to the center of the paper plate. This is how we do it. We use this brad fastener and a grown up might need to help with this because it's a little tricky. So first you're going to put it through the colored paper, the, the pie dough part. And then this is the hardest part. We're going to try to put the, the fastener into the center of the paper plate. You just poke it in. Okay. And then you turn it upside down and you have to do the bending part of the metal, but it's pretty easy. Just be careful of your fingers because it's pointy and you just bend. There it goes. So it looks just like that. And now I could spin the pie around. Okay. So now I'm going to look over at the other one that I already worked on before. The next job is to use your marker and write the words around your pie crust. I'm thankful for. And now we're going to write things that we're thankful for in our pie. So I have to think, what is something I'm thankful for? Well, I'm thankful for my family. So I'm going to write the word family right on the slice. Now, if you didn't want to write the word, you could draw your family in there too, and that would be extra special, I think. Now I'm going to spin so that I can see another slice. Hmm, what else am I thankful for? I wonder what you're thinking of. Your friends? I'll make my, I'm going to write friends in this one. Or I could draw my friends, that would be very nice too. And now I'm going to spin it around again. So I have another slice of pie. What am I thankful for? Hmm. How about my church? I'm thankful for my church. So I'm going to write church on the next slice. There it is. And I have to keep rolling around here until I don't see an, anything else. Here's another spot. What else am I thankful for? Well, I'm thankful for music. I think I'll write music in this one. And when you do yours, you can think of anything you want that you're thankful for. So I have room for one more thing. Hmm, what should I write? Well, maybe I'm thankful for my food. I'll write that in here now. And I could draw pictures of all my favorite foods too. So there it is. I think we filled up our pie with different things in every box and it can spin around and that's my thankful pie. And I hope 
that you'll make a thankful pie of your own. And you might want to make pumpkin like mine, or maybe blueberry, or cherry, or apple, or any kind of pie that you like. So thanks very much, and I'll see you in a minute. Well, I guess you all saw some of the things that I'm thankful for. Father Larry, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for everybody that's watching this video today. Oh, that's good. Thanks a million, everybody. Sounds like a book. It does. <laughs> and what is Miss Diana doing for us today? Uh, I assume she's cooking, but what is she cooking? Nobody tells me anything. She's cooking a turkey. Oh, it's going to be a really long segment. <laughs> well, we'll just have to go to the kitchen and see what's going on. Okay. Diana is one of the things I'm thankful for, too. Me, too. Diana cooking in the morning. Hey, kiddos. Happy Thanksgiving. I am finally back in the kitchen from, I believe my producer is telling me, last May. And I, it is great, it is wonderful, because Thanksgiving, besides being about, you know, saying things you're grateful for, being with people you love, let's be honest, it's about food. So we're gonna make some food. We are going to be making turkey. And no, not the type of turkey that you put into an oven, you roast, it takes forever. We're making turkey cookies, because honestly, that's way more fun. And, you know, when you're drawing, get a construction paper, you make a hand turkey. We're gonna do that, but with cookie dough. So I'm gonna need an assistant real quick. Um, excuse me, Mr. Producer, Mr. Ginger, Mr. Teddy. I kinda, I, I needed some assistance, please. Do I have to talk with this thing in my ear? No, now that we're next to each oh, other, okay. you're okay. Okay, so we're gonna be making a hand turkey. So I'm gonna put my hand right in the middle and he's gonna use a pie cutter, but you can kinda use anything that cuts. Sa and you are going to cut... <laughs> Safety first. Yes, and you, he is just going to cut the outline of my hand out. It doesn't have to be a perfect shape because I'm sure this one won't be. Hey! <laughs> and I, just... am, I am only capable of making perfect hand turkey cookies. Well, how did your hand turkeys look as a little kid is the real question. They look great. Are you sure? I am very sure. Well, mine were always spotless. They got hung up on the fridge or on the walls every year. I think year. some of mine might still be hung up <laughs> somewhere. All right. Thank you, Mr. Teddy. You can go back behind the camera now. Thank you. Affirmative. All right. So now I'm going to take the extra dough and I'm going to put it in a bowl for some safekeeping. So the cookie dough that we used for this, or I'm using for this, is the Pillsbury sugar cookies, the little cubes, and I just kind of smushed them all together and then rolled it out. But you can use any cookie dough. You can make fresh cookie dough. I don't care what you do, as long as you make it look like a hand. Turkey. All right, now we have the shape of the turkey. I'm just gonna make it look, fawn it out a bit. Now that we have our cookie shape, we're gonna put it in the oven. And for this cookie dough, it's 12 minutes. So let's wait 12 minutes. Meanwhile. So while we're waiting, I have to make the icing for our turkey. So we're gonna start with brown for the base of the turkey. That I didn't have to make, but I'm thinking for the feathers, it'd be fun to do Red, orange, and yellow. You know, thanksgiving -y colors. You can do whatever you want. But I want to do red, orange, and yellow. So I'm going to do... Hopefully I'm going to do... There we go. Uh, some red. Now in this one I'm going to put some red because I don't have orange. But what makes orange? Red and yellow. Let's put some yellow in there. I put red in this one. Red and yellow in this one. And just yellow in this one. And I'm going to... Mix it all up with my butter knife, which I'm also going to have then use when my turkey is done. All right, now we got our red. Now let's do our orange. Okay. 
And now our yellow. Oh, again, that nice highlighter yellow, guys. There we go. Gorgeous. So we got our brown for the body, then yellow, red, and orange. And now the turkey probably has about five more minutes on it, so we're gonna jump to that being done. Five minutes later. I got my handy dandy oven mitt on. You know what that means. Our hand turkey is done. Well, he's nice and big and ready to be decorated. But first, he's gotta cool off a bit because the icing would kinda just go all over the place and it'd be a mess and it wouldn't be enjoyable to watch. So we're gonna let this guy cool off and I will be right back. Soon after. All right, friends, my cookie is dry and ready to ice. So I'm gonna first go in with my chocolate icing and I'm gonna put that all over his body. And I'm gonna stop at the fingers, or like the tips, like right below the fingers. You don't have to use chocolate. I know Teddy would not use chocolate on this, but I like chocolate and I think it works well for the bird, so. Over this guy in chocolate. And you do want to cover the thumb in chocolate because that's kind of his face. So. If your turkey breaks apart a bit, like mine is too, that's okay. Cookies are meant for, be share for sharing and Thanksgiving is all about sharing and stuff too. So you can share your, your turkey cookie. Now that he is covered in chocolate, I'm gonna take my googly eyes and I'm gonna give him two eyes. One, two. Then I am going to paint the feathers. Um, it doesn't matter what order you do this in. So I'm gonna take a yellow, put some yellow on him over here. Get one yellow feather. Actually, I'm also gonna use my yellow to make a little beak. So I'm just gonna put more yellow here. And then I'm gonna make a little beak for my turkey over here. Now I have the paper towel near me, so I can use my fingers. There's his little beak. I'm gonna touch the, the chocolate over here. Okay, now I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna do two red in the middle. I'm also gonna use the red to do the little gobble thingy underneath the turkey's beak, so let's give him that. And finally, I'm gonna do the last feather in orange. Now, to not be wasteful, I'm gonna put a little bit of orange in this feather, kind of mix these together, basically. So let's put some orange in the red. Some red in the orange. Some yellow in here. Got a nice decorative turkey. Oh, no, we can't leave the yellow alone now, can we? And boom, we now have a lovely Thanksgiving hand turkey. And it's okay, he looks a little janky. I am very thankful for him. I'm gonna name him Jim the Thanksgiving turkey. Now, make a hand turkey at home. Send pictures to me, name them, but don't name them Jim, because that's what mine is. All right, happy Thanksgiving. I am thankful for all of you. Have a good one. Diana cooking in the morning. Thank you, Diana. Wow, I don't think I ever had turkey for dessert. 
Me either. It's mighty hard to stuff those turkeys.、Oh. But if you figure out how, or if you make the thankful pie, send us a picture on our website or on Facebook. However, you like to go on、uh, social media or have mom or dad do it for you. So we're going to wrap up with a blessing and thanking God for all the many gifts that He has given us. But we'll just ask God's blessing now. So may the peace of God. Which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you this day and every day. Amen. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Stay safe. Happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you in Advent.